sometimes it seems that we're surrounded by danger. At other times we feel perfectly safe. When we consider the foods we eat on a daily basis, neither of these extremes are accurate. While foods may contain harmful microbes, toxic chemicals, bone shards, or even glass fragments, most of the food we eat is safe in the sense that it is metabolized, digested, and excreted on a daily basis without any apparent harm. Every food we eat has some element of danger, either in the short term or in the long term, and yet we must eat to survive. This means that minimizing danger is a much more realistic expectation than eliminating it. Food toxicology seeks to understand these dangers and quantify them so that consumers, companies, and governments can make better informed decisions about what is safe to eat and what is not. Food toxicology deals with several key concepts, including hazards and risks, dose response, bioaccumulation, and xenobiotic metabolism. We will discuss the last three concepts in future videos. For now, let's focus on hazards and risks, because these two common concepts relate to the concept of danger. Although they are closely related, hazard and risk are very distinct concepts. Hazards are potential sources of harm. Common hazards include uneven sidewalks, sharp knives, power tools, potholes, or any of the other dangers we face on a daily basis. Food-based hazards include general categories such as improperly processed or stored foods, foods that are intentionally contaminated, toxins formed or added during processing, physical hazards, and naturally occurring toxins. Raw milk, which would be related to improper processing, acrylamide in fried foods, which is a toxin formed during processing, and poisonous mushrooms, which contain naturally occurring toxins, would be just a few examples of food-based hazards. HACCP, or Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points, is a systematic method of identifying and controlling hazards that was originally designed for the space program in the late 60s and early 1970s. It recognized that hazards are present in food and in the food processing environment, but did not consider risk. So, what is risk and why is it important? Risk is how likely a particular hazard is to cause harm. Risk is all about the probability of harm. For example, playing with razor blades would be very unsafe for a small child, but if the razor blades are locked away in a drawer that the child cannot access, then the risk of harm from those razor blades is very small. In much the same way, foods could potentially be contaminated with many toxic substances. If the toxins in the food supply are limited, by proper food handling and processing, as well as storage, risk is minimized, but never eliminated. The most common application of risk and probability we use is a weather forecast. If you hear that there's a 10% chance of rain, you may choose to leave your umbrella at home. If there's a 90% chance of rain, you will most likely take an umbrella with you. Storm watches and warnings also reflect different levels of weather-related risk. Just because a storm is forecast, meaning that there's a risk of a storm, does that mean a storm will absolutely occur? No, and we wouldn't call for the person forecasting the weather to be fired if the storm did not arrive. In much the same way, we can engage in risky behavior with food, but it doesn't mean that we will absolutely experience harm or illness every time. We can take a chance and eat undercooked hamburgers or raw eggs without getting sick. Then again, we may become very sick the very next time we eat the same type of undercooked food. It's all about probability. So, how do we determine just how risky a food-related toxin might be? Good question. Risk is directly related to exposure. Exposure is the product of three factors. The amount of toxin at any given exposure, exposure frequency, and exposure duration. For chemical toxins, there is a minimum dose required to cause harm. The more frequently that we're exposed to that harmful dose, every week, every day, or multiple times per day, the more likely it is that harm will result. Longer exposures to harmful doses over hours or days versus minutes or seconds also increase the chance of harm. So, risk could be defined as dose times frequency times duration. HARPSI, or Hazard Analysis and Risk-Based Preventive Controls, 
is an update to the concept of HACCP that we mentioned earlier. As the name implies, HARPC not only identifies hazards, but seeks to minimize those hazards that carry the greatest risk, thus maximizing safety and minimizing danger. HARPC is now a requirement for many food manufacturers as part of the Food Safety Modernization Act. In summary, although it is not possible to completely eliminate the dangers posed by food hazards, a proper understanding of these hazards can help minimize risk. This course will focus primarily on the presence and prevalence of chemical toxins or hazards in our food supply and how the body responds to them, how it may be harmed by them, and how to reduce the food safety risks posed by those toxins. Thank you.